I'm a total math nerd, and during my private pilot and instrument training, I was fascinated by all the formulas that are the backbone of the scientific principles of flight. But if you're not a math nerd, you're in luck because there are a bunch of easy shortcuts you can use in flight to help you fly better. They require only a little bit of basic math. In this video, I'll review my favorite top five most useful aviation rules of thumb. Let's go flying. I'm Eric, a private pilot based in Los Angeles. Join me and my family on our aviation adventures throughout Southern California and beyond. I'm not a flight instructor, but I have come across these really cool, useful, super handy rules of thumb over a few years of flying, and I wanted to share them with you. This is meant to be a start of a conversation with your CFI. I've left some links in the description if you want to do a deeper dive into some of these concepts. So I definitely encourage you to check those out. Rule of thumb number one, the crosswind rule of sits. Not sits, sixth. No, sixth. Damn it. Improving landings is a never ending quest for us pilots and knowing the crosswind component of the wind can help pick the right runway anticipate crab angle and aileron deflection in the flare, or even decide whether or not to attempt a landing at all. To calculate the crosswind component of the wind for a given runway, I take the difference in runway heading and wind direction, knock off the zero, and divide by six. The crosswind will be this fraction of the total wind. Here's an example from a recent trip to Big Bear. Let's check the winds one more time. Wind, zero, six, zero, at niner. Visibility, one, zero, all right, we got winds from 060 landing and runway 080, winds are at 9 knots. That's a 20 degree difference between the wind direction and the runway. We knock off the zero and divide by six. The crosswind component is 2 sixths, or one third of the 9 knot wind. We got about a uh, 3 knot crosswind. No problem. Armed with this information, I can pick the best runway and visualize how much crab and aileron deflection I'll need during the approach and flare. Rule of thumb number two, top of descent planning. I love taking passengers on trips to faraway destinations and I wanna make sure they are as comfortable as possible. <sighs> planning a smooth descent is a big part of that. We want to avoid the uncomfortable chop and drop. Knowing how far out to begin your descent is key to making this happen. Due to some trigonometry that I won't get into here, the rule of thumb is this. In order to descend on a three degree glide slope, I take the altitude I need to lose in thousands of feet and multiply by three. I begin my descent at this distance from the target altitude waypoint. Here I am traveling back to my home airport from Big Bear, and I know by the waypoint darts, I wanna be at 3,500 feet. I'm cruising along at 8,500 feet, so I have 5,000 feet to go. Five times three is 15. So I would start my descent 15 miles from darts. Looking at the sectional, 15 miles from darts is right about at the Irwindale Speedway. So I'll start my descent there. If I want a gentler two and a half degree glide slope descent, I use four times the vertical. So if I need to lose 5,000, I start descending 20 miles out. I really love learning new rules of thumb. And in general, I think we pilots enjoy learning new things. That brings us to the sponsor of this video that is all about learning new things. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. Recently, Goomba and I used Skillshare to learn how to use SketchUp to 3D model and 3D print a GoPro battery caddy that we now use to make these YouTube videos. We're also enjoying the Skillshare class, Introduction to DIY, Becoming a Maker, taught by Mark Frauenfelder. And I really like his combination of inspiring insight and useful information. I was impressed with the broad range of subjects that Skillshare offers. There's even classes on productivity and marketing. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. We've really been enjoying learning lots of new things. Rule of thumb number three, descent rate planning. This one goes hand in hand with the last one. Knowing at what rate to descend for a three degree glide slope is also super useful in making a nice controlled and well-planned descent. The vertical speed required to descend on a three degree glide slope can be found by taking my descent ground speed and multiplying by five. In our previous example out of Big Bear, I'm descending with a 140 knot ground speed. So a 700 foot per minute descent will put me on a three degree glide slope. If I calculated my top of descent for a two and a half degree glide slope, I can multiply my ground speed by four to get the descent rate necessary. 
This descent worked out perfectly. I crossed 3,500 feet just before darts. Rule of thumb number four, the 50-70 runway abort point rule. I always check my POH performance charts to make sure I theoretically have enough runway at the given field elevation and density altitude. And I usually add a healthy safety margin to these charts because most of the planes we fly are old and don't perform up to the exact numbers. I've read it's a good idea to add about 20% to these numbers. So I've got my takeoff roll figured out from the POH with an added margin, and now I can back it up with a takeoff abort point. This rule of thumb says that at halfway down the runway, we should make sure we have achieved at least 70% of our rotation speed. I usually pick a landmark or use the runway distance markers to locate the halfway point before beginning the takeoff roll. In my plane, VR is 61 knots, so 70% of that is 42 knots. If I'm not at that speed by the predetermined landmark, I abort the takeoff. I use this technique on every takeoff because this check can indicate some problems if the engine is not making expected power. Before we get to the final in my top five most useful rules of thumb, do you have a rule of thumb that you've come across that you find particularly useful or interesting? Comment below in the YouTube comments to share it. And while you're at it, if you're finding this video interesting, useful, or entertaining, go ahead and click that thumbs up. Rule of thumb number five, weight adjusted maneuvering speed. Most maneuvering speeds in your aircraft POH are given for max gross and should actually be adjusted for lighter loads. In a previous video about flying and turbulence, I did a deep dive into weight adjusted maneuvering speeds with the detailed explanations and math, so feel free to check that one out too. But here's a simple rule of thumb for adjusting maneuvering speed based on weight. I can reduce maneuvering speed two knots for every 100 pounds below maximum gross weight. So in my plane, the max gross weight is 3,400 pounds, and the POH maneuvering speed is 130 knots. I have the plane loaded with just myself and some fuel for a weight of 2,700 pounds. For every 100 pounds below max gross, I can reduce the maneuvering speed by two knots. In this case, I'm 700 pounds below max gross, so I should reduce the maneuvering speed by 14 knots for a weight adjusted maneuvering speed of 116 knots. Add it up. To support this channel like these amazing aviators and aviation fans, become a SoCal Flying Monkey member on Patreon. You'll get access to exclusive content, tier benefit merch, and our Discord chat server. I hope you enjoyed my top five favorite rules of thumb and that they make your flying more fun. Okay, all right. Until next time, thanks for coming along on the journey with me. <laughs>